We never know whether we'll wake up tomorrow, but we always set our alarms. We never know whether the day ahead will be enjoyable, but we always stir ourselves that strong cup of Americano to get us going. We never know what the future will entail, but we always set ambitious plans. Why? Because we want it to be a better day, we believe that it will be a better day, and we will make it a better day. But sometimes, life just has to build a concrete wall between you and your endeavors. And it's an actual concrete wall, by the way. So, then what would you do? Would you be Liz Trust after six weeks in office? Or would you be Nelson Mandela fighting to end apartheid in South Africa? Honestly, two years ago, I would have been the fighter of a British Prime Minister. Now, let me tell you a story, my DSA story. Two years ago, three Burmese students in my batch, in my school, applied to NUS High. One was my best friend, another was an AL10 student, and third was me. I applied because NUS High was my dream school, at that time, of course. One of us got rejected. Let's play a game of guess who it was, shall we? Definitely you. How, how could you, man? How could you? I'm such a smart, intelligent person. I'm yeah, okay, but yeah. So imagine the agony, the pain, the embarrassment, the heartbreak I felt when Enya's High rejected me. Now, comments like, eh? Maybe this person, not as smart as he is, eh? Top scorer, now cannot be the of student. How? Yes. Because as a top scorer, everyone expected me to get into uh, uh, NUS High. But I didn't. An AL10 student did. It was as unfathomable as the fact that an average Singaporean, or rather an individual for that matter, waits six months at a traffic light for the traffic light to turn green, by the way. So I was wondering to myself, why couldn't NUS High just give me that green light for me to be admitted into that school? It is what it is, I guess. But the problem was, I faced severe backlash afterwards. As I told you earlier, people were like, oh, maybe he's not smart enough. But it didn't just stop at my level. If it's my level, sure, I mean, you won't beat me in a 1v1 in the street, right? But it went further. People were like, oh, your parents must be so depressed. So pitiful for the parents. Even my best friend's parents bring my parents up to comfort them. And I didn't enjoy that at all. Now, this entire experience, I like to liken it to a breakup. Except Annual Sai was not a good girlfriend at all. She was a coward. If you want to reject me, you stand in front of me and you tell me, no, you're not my girlfriend anymore. What did she do? She got one of her secretaries to send an email to me to say that I got rejected from Annual Sai. Coward. So I was very angry and I was also very ashamed at that time. However, there were people who supported me, my friends, my family, my teachers. And I realized gradually, if NUS High cannot recognize my stunning beauty and charisma, then I'll find someone who did. And so I put my nose to the grindstone. I'd not stop until 15 practice papers were done a day. I'd not stop until all my corrections were completed. I'd not stop until I achieved my goal. And it paid off. When news spread that I was the only one in my primary school to have gotten into RI, that look of shock, silence, satisfaction. And that's why I persevere. That's why I work hard. Not because I want fame, I'm already very famous, let's face it, right? But it's because I want to prove them and my ex wrong. And it goes further than that. Because I hated the feeling of seeing my parents feel weak, feel inferior to the rest, to my best friend family, to everyone who looked down on me at that time. I didn't like the feeling of them having to undergo that emotional suffering for something I couldn't achieve. All I ever want is for them to bask in my success. Nothing else. Now, if there's one thing I learned from this entire story, right? And I'd like to liken this to a quote by Winston Churchill. He once told, he once said, 
never give up on something you can't go a day without thinking about. And your side was my true love, my first true love. And she broke my heart. And of course, I remember. And so from then on, I never gave up on no, not getting her heart back, but finding a much more prettier face that will welcome me with open arms. And in this case, R.I.D. And we discount the fact that R.I.D. is an all boys school. But the fact of the matter is that I learned that all failures are blessings in disguise. Had NUS High not rejected me, I would not be with my true love and true soulmate, all right? Had NUS High not rejected me, I would still be Darwin Nunes for all of you who watch football, never being able to achieve a goal. Had I never, had I not been rejected by NUS High, I would not meet fantastic people, friends, families, even one audience at the back right there, my debate partner as well, Alan. I would never meet these kinds of people. And that's why I like to treat this as a failure or rather, blessing in disguise. However, it required strength, will, fervor, grit, hard work in order for me to achieve that goal. So everyone, find your fervor, find your passion, find your determination. Tear that ugly mask apart to see a beauteous face that's under. Ladies and gentlemen, let your failure scar you, injure you, hurt you, pain you, anything but never let it kill. <coughs> because wounds will always heal. And in no time, you'll find yourself stroking that wound, that scar, loving you, because you're now a stronger person. I like to end off with one quote that has inspired me throughout my entire journey and still inspires me to this very day. And I'd like to impart it to everyone here. It's a quote by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. But by all means, keep moving. Thank you.